So one of the things I tend to bang on about is doing things like protecting your assets while they're in transit. So as soon as I went and got the Kronos from the studio yesterday, and I'm just about to put it back in its box to take it back down to the studio, what I thought I'd do is I'd show you the case. So this is typical of um, one of the cases that I would use uh, to transport uh, my equipment around. Now I don't gig very often, so very rarely does this go outside, uh, either moving from here to the studio or back from the studio, or it goes out on loan. Uh, I do have a couple of people I loan equipment to, um, but they're very trusted people, so that's why I'm, I'm, I don't have really have a problem loaning equipment to them. But this is uh, one of such cases. Now I tend to have all my cases made. When I buy a new piece of equipment, like I bought the Oasis, I will now go and get a case made for the Oasis so that when it's moved from A to B, I can move it easily and I know it's going to be protected. Um, one of the things about moving a keyboard, if you're trying to move a keyboard and it's not in a case, is it doesn't take an awful lot for something to drop onto the keyboard or smash the screen, especially with these touch screens because they're not cheap to repair. Anyway, going back to this. This is the case that I use for the, for the Kronos. As you can see, it's fairly sturdy. It is fairly tall. Uh, and the reason why it's taller than the actual keyboard itself, so the keyboard comes to about here, is because I always have an extra compartment built into my keyboard cases, um, purely for putting stuff in, and I'll go on to that in a minute. Um, as you can see, this is made of stucco, which is fairly sturdy, so it's like a, a piece of wood with a, a plastic, a sturdy plastic on top of it and aluminium sides and then nice thick corners to stop it uh, getting damaged. The other thing about these cases is I always put rollers on the case. So that means that when I am working on my own, I can use this top handle here, which is just uh, on screen there, as you can see it, and I can then drag the, the case on the rollers. Believe me, when you're moving something on your own that is this heavy, now the keyboard itself is quite heavy, but when you put it in the case, it becomes quite a lot more heavy. And this case is awkward, you know, it's, it's big, it's long, trying to lift it. Takes me back to my DJing days where I used to lift the coffin all on my own. Um, so what I used to have was I used to have the SL1210 on one side, SL1210 on the other side, and the mixer in the middle. Uh, known as the coffin, probably about this sort of size actually, funny enough. And I used to lift that and move that around all on my own with no, no problems whatsoever. Um, I'm a little bit older and I'm not, not, not quite as fit as I used to be. And believe me, moving something like this around is, is uh, an interesting uh, concept. So this is the case itself. Now, it will cut my head off now, of course, as I move around. If I twist the case around on its side, good strong handles. You can get onto that. Nice strong butterfly clips to keep it closed, okay? And those clips, if I really wanted to, I could lock those clips, put a um, padlock through it to keep, the, uh, keep people out of the case. Now, if I open the case, like so, as you can see, there is the Kronos, nicely fitted in here. Now, the great thing about this case is obviously you've got the padded foam here that sort of stops that moving. Um, there is another piece of foam that goes in here that just sits on top of the keys and just sort of holds the keyboard effectively locked in there, um, even though that will hold them flat anyway. Uh, the other thing about this case is it's got cutouts and the cutouts are there and there, and they match in with the, the, the back of the keyboard where there are knobs and what have you on the back of the keyboard, so the cutouts and match those. So there you are, there's, there's the case. Um, as I said, I always have a compartment put into the case. If I'm out on the road or if I'm moving around, that will typically have two 10 meter, cable, 10 meter audio cables in it. Um, the amount of places I've been in the past where you've turned up with your keyboard rig and the sound engineer has said, I'm sorry, I haven't got any patch cables. Or I've only got one patch cable, so you have to run thing mono. Sorry, but I always play stereo. That's why I buy expensive keyboards to play stereo. So two 10 meter patch cables normally go in there. A four way um, power uh, strip goes in there and a power cord. 
So therefore, this is completely uh, ready to use the moment I get to the venue, if I was playing. The other thing that sometimes goes in there is a screwdriver and some fuses, but I haven't had to use uh, screwdrivers and fuses for a very, very long time. So there you go. One very sturdy case that will keep your equipment. I buy these from a company called Swan in the UK. Um, they're very quick to deliver. Uh, typically, if I ordered one today, I'd have this uh, with me next week. So I've just ordered the one for the Oasis. Um, hopefully that will be with me next week. There you go. Hard cases, why they're important. So this is the point in the video where I turn around to you and say, if you enjoyed the contents of this video, please give it a thumbs up. It allows other people to find this content more easily that you have enjoyed. I'm sure by now, if you didn't like the content of the video, you've probably given me a thumbs down, but I'd prefer if you didn't. If you'd like to be notified about when I post additional content to this channel, somewhere about here should be the subscription icon. So please click on there and subscribe to the channel. Over here should be other content that you may enjoy that I've already done or posted to the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.